Hello everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this small random weave basket. So today's project has been inspired by two things. Firstly, an artist called Matt Tommy, who creates these beautiful small baskets and sculptures out of various forage materials. And he also uses some really simple techniques for making those. And because some of these weaving styles are quite simple, it really is inspiring for a beginner like myself to be able to try and create something similar. Obviously, he's got many more years experience than I do, so I'm sure there's lots of different things that go into a product like that that makes it amazing. But instead of being honestly a little bit scared off by some of the basket making techniques at the moment because I don't understand the type of weave, projects like this and artists like Matt Tommy are an inspiration for that. And also that brings me on to the second thing that is the inspiration today, which is this. This is a similar size basket to Matt Tommy's, but this one was one that I created myself, actually inspired by Textile Indie. So thank you at Textile Indie, everyone there. So this basket design is a very simple one. It's just six different spokes, stakes, I'm not sure what you would call them. Different sticks crossed over so that they're equal distance apart and you end up with 12 once you fold everything up and then you're just holding it in place and just twining all the way around. Don't worry, I will show you how to do some twining later on. Today's project, I'd like to make something similar to this so that it fits in your hand nicely, but at the same time, I wanna make it a little bit bit more showy offy, <laughs> if that makes sense, and also a little bit taller. So that's the inspirations. Now, materials. Overall, my first piece of advice would be just to get out into the woods. A lot of my research has come from in practice is being out there and just testing materials, things that have, trees that have fallen down, things that are on the floor, or maybe even things that are going to be cut down anyway. As for what you can make this project out of, it absolutely totally depends and it is really up to you. Because this is going to be a fairly small structure, you want something that can weave in and out on a fairly tight curve. So different things we've got here. This is a type of pine off the end of the tree. We have dogwood, look at that, love that color. We've got some willow, this is hedgerow willow. And then we have this, this is a bit of a kind of wild card really. This is willow from my landlady's garden. And this was a tree that had snapped and had fallen over, but was still just alive. And that's why I think this is actually a diseased willow. Then we've also got things like spruce root. So far, this is my favorite material to work with. I've made an entire video, which you can view here, where I go into detail about how to harvest spruce root and also how to harvest it in a place that means you're creating as little disturbance as possible. We've also got, for some of the spokes, I've got some thicker stuff. That could be willow, that could be potentially dogwood, maybe hazel. I'm probably gonna use spruce today. They're the things that you weave around. So you have the thicker pieces, then you have your weavers, which is the things that go in and out and weave around. And then lastly, here I've got some willow. This is buff willow. I've been lucky enough that I do some work with Peggy Beer, an artist who makes natural crafts. I've actually been doing some courses with her for Koi Clale, and we've actually been doing some, aside from that, some projects together where I go to a community center and make some different crafts out of willow. This was what I had left over from that project there. There are so many different natural products that you can use and this is the most inspiring and fun part of the process for me, I think, because you're going out into the woodland to kind of learn and forage and just kind of play. And unlike going shopping, you're like, I'm going there to get a thing and then that's it. You're going there to just, to, to mooch, to see what's there, to explore, to find things. For example, this behind me, I didn't plan to get this, but someone had cut a tree down and there was loads of it still green, which means it's fairly recently been cut down. Smells beautiful, probably gonna make a wreath or something out of that. There's just so much out there that is available to people that you don't have to destroy or cut anything down to get to. Now, I'm not gonna say the way I'm doing things is the best way possible and the most healthy way for the environment around me to do it, but. I'm still learning. So please comment down below if you have better ways of collecting some of this stuff that I've mentioned today. So there we are, there's your materials. Let's get started. Got me a bucket of goodies. So a lot of the stuff that I collected has been soaking overnight. Some of them like the willow and dogwood, I haven't soaked first, partly because I only harvested them like three or four days ago, if that. Depending on the material, depends on how long you soak it for. 
So what we're doing first is we're creating, see this, this cross section? So these are made out of sticks, sticks? <laughs> they are made out of sticks, six sticks. Generally, as a rule of thumb, Peggy Beer actually taught me this, you don't want more than three fingers width in between your upright supports, whatever you want to call them. I like the distance between these. This is obviously, for me, only really one finger distance, but because we, want, we still want the structure in there and also because we are gonna random weave, I think that's a good size to continue with. Maybe before cutting your pieces, you kind of want to work out how big your project will be. So I'm just putting it in my hand. It's probably going to be, you know, be something like that. And then that would be, so that's for where I would cut this here. But for today, I've already got these and I wanna reuse some of this stuff. The reason that I'm reusing this is because I am notorious for starting a project and just getting too carried away and it be getting bigger and bigger. An example of that is what I made yesterday. That's why we're using what we've got and if it's a little bit smaller, okay. Right, so we've got four, so we need another two. I'm gonna show you how to split. First of all, let's just cut this bit to size. One of the easiest ways that I've found is put my knife on a hard surface, hold it still, get the spruce root in the middle, and just very, 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 very gently rock it. Do not push hard, but also try and hold your hand far enough away so I'm not holding it right next to the blade. I'd have more control if I was holding it right next to the blade, but if my hand slips and I'm putting pressure on it downward, then obviously things could go wrong. So my hand's a little bit further away and I'm just using very, very slowly, just using the sharpness of the blade to do the work. And over time, here we are, you'll create your split. What you're trying to do is if, for example, like already here, one side's thinner than the other side, put force into the fatter side and that will try and tell the split to go in the way of the fatter side, making it thinner. If you would, I'm gonna hold it in my teeth so that it's level for the camera above. And there we go. So we've got our rough shape here. One of the potential issues that you're gonna come up with is when you're twining this very start bit. See how thick that is? The thicker it is, the harder it will be to get that to stay together on those first few rungs. This is where whether to make that decision now on whether you don't mind that and you want it quite thick or you want to thin some of your pieces so that they fit on top of one another a little bit easier. If you did want to do that, take your knife. I've got a cheap carving knife here. And then very, 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 very slowly, take a small piece off. So I'm gonna do that now so they fit and they're a little bit thinner when I first start the twining process. Now we have our six pieces. Put them equal distance apart. I'm gonna use spruce root today. You could use a piece of string for this, natural cordage. Fold it, not in half. The reason why you don't want it in half is that when you need to attach new pieces in, you don't want them to end at the same time because that can add weakness. You've got your loop, put your loop over one of the spokes and then we're gonna be twining. So the best way that I can describe twining and the way, the way that I remember it, you've got your two weavers, one on the left hand side and one on the right. You take your one that's on the left and you go over. So it's over this one, under this one. Over this one. So I'm trying to do this without moving anything else. So my left hand is holding the structure in, in place. So now I've gone over one and under one and I've got back to the start. And now it's just a case of exactly the same again. So with my left, Weaver, over one, so now we've obviously moved to the right, so we're going over this one, under this one, with my left weaver, over one, under one, and back out again. And then pull that tight. And that's it, so now, just keep doing that, and I will come back to you once I've got it to stick in place. 
Okay, so to put in your next weaver, you wanna put it into the hole of where the last one is coming out. So what I want to do is put this new piece in the same hole that it came from. And then, leaving out the old piece, you just continue from there. Totally up to you how wide you wanna do it. Bearing in mind, at the moment I'm doing this before I start curving everything up. So I'm gonna keep it flat and I'm just gonna do a few more rounds just until it's really holding itself strongly in this position. Finished all my twining now, and I've got this wonderful <laughs> way of holding it in place. So what I've done, twine everything, and then tie it at the top, like so. The reason that I did that, instead of it being quite flat, I wanted it to be a bit more like a cone at the beginning. I've done enough of that now, so I've opened it back up again. What we're gonna try and do is twine this part together at the top, so that it will hold its shape, while at the same time keeping all of this open. This section, freehand, or find something to put in and hold your structure in. I mean, that, <laughs> I love it when stuff like that happens. That's perfect. I literally, as if I could have planned that. That will hold things in place. I'll get my spruce root, and then, same as before, fold it, not quite in half, start anywhere you want. Then it's gonna be a case of twining this, keep building up so that it strongly holds itself in place at that point. Now onto the random weave sections. Up to you which way round you do this. I'm just gonna start now weaving in randomly, but I'm making sure that I'm randomly weaving in between these two sections. And because of the size of this structure, I'm not gonna go too far. So for example, I'm not gonna go sort of in one and then out four later, because obviously that will create a line in the middle there. I am gonna try and go in and out roughly every single one. You don't always have to keep going in one direction either. You can change directions. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep whacking myself in the face, yep. If you're using things that are a bit more brittle, you just need to kind of, what would be the right term? Warm them up, <laughs> loosen the fibers a little bit, especially with a small project like this where you are gonna be asking quite a lot of your material to weave in and out. You need to potentially loosen up your materials first. <laughs> Okay, there we go. This will hold itself now so that I can take this twining that I did at the top here, I'm gonna take that out now and I'm gonna put it back in, but I'm really gonna tie it tight. And then after that, then it's gonna be doing the border. But first of all, let's get that done. Okay, now for the next bit. I've gotta work out how to do the next bit first. <laughs> Next, this is a fairly simple weave and it's a way to add strength and it's called a three rod whale. So I'm gonna use the buff willow for this one and the way to do a three rod whale is behind one and in front of one with your first weaver. Thick end, lay down first. Second weaver, you move to the right, behind one, in front of one. Third one, same again, behind one, in front of one. And then it's a case of going over two and behind one. So this is my first weaver here, and it will go over one and two and behind one. I'm holding things in place. You don't always have to do this, but because this is such a tight, small basket, I'm just wary of everything kind of wanting to come off so I'm just kind of holding it in place while I'm doing it for now. So next one, this one, and you see it's coming out here. 
So that means it will go over one, two, and behind one. And then what I'm gonna do on this, I'm actually gonna leave this out of this bit now so that it just sticks out and this will just appear out of the basket because I just, I just love that knot. So therefore I'm gonna miss this one off. So that means this next weaver will go over one, two, but behind that one. And I'm just kind of pushing things down, holding them in place. And then same again, over one, two, and behind one. Next, pretty simple, it's just tip to tip and butt to butt. So I've got my next three and then number one, I'm just gonna put it in the gap in the hole where the last one came from. And then remember, missing this one out, I am. You, don't, you wouldn't, if you, were, if you weren't missing this one out, then it would just go in front of one, two, behind one. I'm missing it out, so it's gonna go in front of one, two, behind one. So you're just continuing what was happening beforehand. And then it's just rinse and repeat until you're finished and you're happy with the thickness of the border. I finished it, I had to skip ahead, but that's not for you right now, you can't see that. <laughs> the reason I had to skip ahead myself and then I'm gonna tell you how I did it is because I had to kind of work things out as I went along. So first of all, after finishing the three rod whale, I trimmed everything up and squeezed everything down so it was nice and tight and holding in properly. Then it was onto the border. For this, what I did was I got a piece of willow, split that down, and then to make it a little bit more pliable, I had to thin it down a little bit more. The way that I did this was by resting my right hand on the table, holding the knife, and then using my left hand, just draw the piece of willow slowly back, just taking off small slithers of willow at a time. At the end of each split of willow, I then just thinned out ever so slightly the underside of one and the top side of the other so that when they go around and sit on top of one another the thickness is about the same as the rest of the willow. With a little bit of soaking that then meant I was able to put it one half on the outside of the basket and one half on the inside. It was however quite difficult to hold in place when I first did it so I needed every single wooden peg that we owned it seemed but with them all holding this in place I was then able to secure them together. Starting off with just a very simple knot and then tying it round and round and round and round and round and then ending with a very simple knot again. I did that at either end. Then, again, getting some inspiration from Textile Indie and their videos, I wanted to fill the gap. Now, they use like cordage or which again, you could make yourself and it fits in all the way around. Obviously, I couldn't do that at this time because I had the spokes sticking out and I couldn't cut them down for obvious reasons, the border would fall off. So I decided to use dogwood, partly because I liked the red and partly because it was just the right thickness that I could squeeze it in, in between each of those spokes so that it seemingly does go all the way around. To do this, it was just a case of cutting it into shape and just squeezing it down with my thumb, being careful not to pull anything up while I'm pushing the dogwood down. Finally, it was using the spruce root. Again, another textile indie. Thank you again for all your advice. If you were tying the spruce root all the way around, a good way of measuring what you need is to go three times around your basket and then that will mean you've got enough string or in my case, spruce root to use to do this method. I then started by tying it in at one side, again with a very simple knot. And then it was just a case of roughly spacing them apart, going round and round and round, pulling it tight, because again, this is also holding the border in place, and then tying it off with a very simple knot at the end. I did this in the sections either side where I tied off the willow to begin with. Then a few little final cleanup bits, and we're done. There we are, finished. What do we think? I, lo I, I love this bit. And yeah, I don't know, is it a foraging basket? Is it a sculptural piece? I don't know, pretty pleased with the result. What do you think? Please, comments down below. Also, if there's anything that you'd like me to delve into deeper in other projects, for example, the types of weave or particular types of basket that you think might work with a random weave. 
The reason that I'm focusing a lot on random weave at the moment is because I just think it's such a great beginner type of weaving because it's just so freeing. You don't have to stick to a rigid guideline of how things are made and you can let the mistakes become part of the character of your projects. But before I go, if you enjoyed this video, you might be interested in how to make this. This is a random weave sculpture made fully of willow. I made a video about this recently and I will leave it here at the end. So thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.